In this example, we're trying to get the work done on a spring and the work done by the spring. And what we're given is how much force it took, 100 newtons, to compress it by how far, 25 centimeters, from the equilibrium position. So the first step in getting this done is to get the spring constant. And so we're going to quote Hooke's law. And I'm just writing this down in terms of the magnitudes. I'm not trying to worry about direction with a minus sign in there. I'll take care of that using physical reasoning later. And it takes a 100 Newton force to compress by 25 centimeters. I got to put that in SI units, meters. So I get K is 100 Newtons over 0.25 meters. 0.25 is a fourth, so I can do this one without a calculator. I get 400 newtons per meter for the spring constant. Then I get into the work done on the spring versus by the spring. And so whichever way you do it, the magnitude of it is going to be given by this formula, 1 half kx squared. It's just a question of asking which one of these should be positive and which one should be negative. So here I am doing work on the spring to compress it. And as I'm compressing it, the displacement is in this direction. All right, so with the force in the same direction as the displacement, my dot product work is the dot product of the force you apply and multiplied by the distance you apply it through. My dot product has to be positive. Now I want to issue a warning here that the force is not constant. So you can't take that 100 newtons and multiply it by the 25 centimeters to get the work. The force is very tiny at first and it grows and grows and grows. And to find the total work you have this continuously changing force and you actually have to use an integral to do it. But that integral has already been done for us, and we know the magnitude of the work is going to be 1 half kx squared. That is a result from calculus. All right, so with force and displacement in the same direction at all times during the compression, I know this comes out to a positive, so I'm going to emphasize that by writing a plus. My spring constant is 400. My total compression is 0.25 meters, and I'm going to square that. And we'll get a number on this real quick. And I get 12 and a half joules. So the work done on the spring is 12 and a half joules, and that is a positive number. I was trying to write a plus out here to emphasize that. How about the work done by the spring? So throughout this entire compression process, you're pushing on the spring, and the spring is pushing back on you with exactly the same magnitude of force. That's Newton's third law. So the entire time the spring is doing this, of course that force starts out really tiny and grows and grows and grows, and so you have to use calculus, but the result of that is 1 half kx squared to get the magnitude. Um, and given that the force is always opposite to the direction of the next tiny displacement, every contribution to the work has to be negative, and I'm just going to get exactly the same magnitude for my answer, but with a minus sign out in front. So in this case, work is going to be negative 12.5 joules. And this is just another example um, to emphasize that when energy is being stored in a conservative force, so clearly the spring is storing energy here because I'm coiling it up tighter and tighter, I see that the work done by the spring is actually going to be negative as the energy in it increases. So this is another example of the fact that the work done by a conservative force is the negative of the change in its potential energy.